what we're going to talk about here is image prep or image preparation. In the uh, professional world of uh, document uh, creation, your images need to be the right uh, file formats and your images need to have the right resolution for professional output if they um, are going to print without any problems. And so the first thing we always need to do with all of the images that we want to put in our documents, we need to open them up one by one in Photoshop. And the first thing we need to do is we want to change the mode from RGB to CMYK. For print, CMYK is the only, only mode, color mode, that's acceptable on the professional level. So I change it to CMYK. Okay. Then um, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And we need to save it in a file format that is um, preferred and is acceptable in the professional uh, world as well. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to save the image as a TIFF, not as a Photoshop, not as a JPEG, not as a GIF, certainly. Those are form file formats for uh, multimedia but TIFF, and um, you will hear folks say sometimes, well, you know, I put a PSD um, or I put um, a PDF graphic in my document and print it okay. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but you run the risk of it not processing properly if it's not a TIFF. The accepted preferred way is CMYK TIFF, period. Now, when we save things as a TIFF, um, one of the things that we can do is if it has layers, which is often the case, we will flatten it. We will not save it with any layers. And um, the um, reason for that is it, again, makes it a little bit smaller file and a little bit easier to manage. And um, I usually have the PSD version of the file with layers in case it needs to be edited. And I'll send that to the print shop. But for the TIFF version, I will flatten it, which will remove all the layers. And so I'll say save. And then our TIFF options, we don't want to compress it. We don't want to mess with it. So we want none here in the TIFF options. And we'll say OK. Then the next thing that we need to look at is the size and the resolution. So we go up under image in our main menu, and we go to image size and we get this dialog box. Now, um, we have talked um, uh, and we'll continue to talk about this issue of the resolution needing to meet the minimum of whatever your output source is going to be. And so, um, most anything other than for multimedia, 72 pixels per inch is much too low a resolution. So um, notice that right now we have the little locking device here. That's what this is. And it indicates that the size and the width are locked together so that we don't um, accidentally distort the image. Um, when we want to um, change this, the resolution, we can especially increase it. We can get that. We can increase the resolution by giving up some of the size. Remember, there's a trade-off, a direct um, opposite um, uh, relationship of resolution and size. And it's the only way you can raise the resolution of an image is to reduce the physical size. So what I need to do is come right here under resample. Resample, uncheck this, and watch what's going to happen. It's going to lock the size and the resolution together. There you see the lock has now encompassed the size and the resolution. And so now I can change the size and the resolution, and they will automatically change proportionately to each other. And in this case, let's say I'm going to print this document on my laser printer. We need one and a half to two times, one and a half to two times the um, LPI. And the LPI on the laser printer is generally 85. So 
I need one and a half, approximately 127 to two times 85, 170 for a um, resolution to be sure that my image is going to print properly and look good. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 150 and um, kind of in the middle there, 150. And look what just happened. The size of the image got smaller, almost by half. And that is how it's supposed to work. You need to lock the size and the resolution together by unchecking resample. And then we can mess with the size and the resolution. In this case, 150 um, will be just fine. If we say, well, we want the image to be a little bit bigger, the very lowest I can do in this particular case is 127 pixels per inch, and that leaves the image about uh, four and a half inches um, square, a little bit more than that. And we can um, either do it here or we can make the image smaller in Photoshop, and that will increase the resolution um, as well. I mean, in InDesign, we can make the image smaller in InDesign. And later on, we'll look at how we can check what the final resolution is going to be in InDesign when we pre-flight and package the uh, file. But for um, the time being, this will give us an image at an acceptable um, pixels per inch resolution. This is the largest size it can be. And we'll say, OK. Then we'll quit save these changes and we do that for each individual image that we're going to use in our document one by one we open them up we change the color mode we change um, the uh, file format to a tiff cmyk tiff we check to see if the resolution is acceptable as well and then that image is ready to go you should put them all in the same folder and keep them uh, ready to go when you want to start assembling your document.